So 3D printing is very often misunderstood as some type of hobbyist technology that isn't ready for prime time. Of course, we disagree with that. We mass produce parts all the time. But out there in industry, there are very real examples of a lot of people saving millions of dollars by using 3D printing. And today we're gonna to talk about a single example at Ford, where they've been saving millions of dollars per year at one of their transmission plants by using fairly mundane 3D printing. So the story starts at Ford's Sharonville transmission plant, STP, which is near Cincinnati. And the two main characters in this are Jeff Fisher and Joan Messer. Jeff has been a millwright who has worked with repairing machinery and keeping the plant running for all that time. And Joan's main role was ordering replacement parts for all of that machinery to make sure everything kept running, even though now they're certified AM technicians. But the reason for that all started with 67 small parts that exist on nine assembly lines. These little parts were called pucks. The job of these pucks is to grip a rail and carry it from one part of the assembly line to the next. But the issue is, is that these actually break pretty darn often. And when one of them breaks, the entire assembly line has to stop. And if you've ever worked in a factory, having it stop is probably the worst thing that can happen because everybody is still getting paid and customers are still waiting for their final products to get out. If the transmission factory is stopped, you're not gonna get your car in time. So this simple plastic part is really slowing stuff down. But even more than that, even though these things break often, a single one of them would cost $180. So you have all of this lost production time while this assembly line has to be repaired on a regular basis, and you also have a very expensive part that you have to put into it. Enter in 3D printing. Even if you were having these pieces printed by a service like us, it would still be way cheaper than 180 bucks a piece. So what Messer and Fisher did was actually start 3D printing these pucks. And they ended up just having the cost of the material and the cost of all the labor associated with it, as well as the knowledge base that goes into it. But it's still way less expensive. And now Ford has a controlled supply chain for these really critical spare parts that were causing the factory to shut down. But they didn't stop there. That was a critical part, but that was just a proof of concept. They figured out that they could print the parts and they went through the whole process of learning how to use the machines. They even printed the articulated octopus model that comes with the machine. But once they had those pucks in place and everybody else could see that, hey, having replacement parts quickly printed rather than having to go through a machining process and everything else is really handy. So another example that they ran into was actually when the parts that they were using from suppliers changed. They had emergency stop buttons all over these factories. We've actually talked about this when, in our control panel video, but the manufacturer of those switches changed the way they went together. So you had to reorder a bunch of these really expensive switches and reinstall them on machines. But what Messer and Fisher did was essentially redesign a third party part that could be plugged onto these emergency stop switches so that they could continue to use the old switches that they had without having to go through the whole transition. And that seems like not that big of a deal. How many times do you have to replace a button? Well, they ended up making five or 600 of them. And these things are used on a fairly regular basis. So they do break and need repairs and replacements. So it's a fairly large quantity of parts that's not trivial, but having them machined would be super expensive. And of course, purchasing them from the supplier was super expensive. One of these switches would cost like a hundred bucks a piece because industrial equipment is just expensive if you're buying from those manufacturers because they have such little volume. 3D printing it either through a service or on your own is a very affordable option. But this isn't even really the best example because all of these are fairly typical. A lot of people know that you can 3D print parts more affordably than you can buy spare pieces or get them machined or manufactured any other way. But there's another example that people are not so aware of. So this is a transmission plant. They're moving around big old heavy metal gears and wheels. But at a certain part of the manufacturing line, the broaching part, as a matter of fact, where they were putting these ring gears together, they were having a bunch of these gears, which are a very expensive machined part, scraped and dinged to where they had to reject them in the assembly line because it would cause a leak or cause a seal breakage or do something even worse. But the reason for it was is that the factory had designed a jig and carrying fixture that was actually made out of steel. So when you have steel on steel, one of the steel is gonna scratch the other ones. So the actual design of the factory was incorrect because they machine everything. Why wouldn't you machine everything? That's how you make stuff. But inadvertently, they had created a system that caused a really high rejection rate. So you're losing a thousand dollar part whenever somebody nicks it somehow, taking the jig off. 
So what they ended up doing was actually designing a 3D printed version of this jig. It's called a pallet fixture if you want the specific name. But this jig was, they were asked, can you make this out of plastic rather than out of steel? Because our own tools are ruining the parts that we're trying to make. So they actually redesigned the whole thing from scratch in order to be 3D printed. And this gave them a number of advantage. Number one, they had a softer material. In this case, they used just standard PET G, which was totally fine for an industrial application. They printed out the pieces and they were able to make them in three different sizes, which was necessary to way more affordably than having them machined. The parts no longer damaged to the parts that they were making, and they were able to make some improvements to make them even better than what had been there before. They were able to make them multicolored so that you knew which diameter of gear was coming towards you. They were able to change the materials and they were able to change the fixturing so that they could get performance and capabilities that were not possible before machining it out of steel. So this saved thousands and thousands of dollars for this transmission plant every single year. And when you count all this up, all the rejected transmission gears and all of the downtime from broken plastic pieces in the pucks and the time and effort of having to replace whole assemblies rather than just replacing the single part that needs made, it comes to millions of dollars per year at the single plant that Jeff and Joan are saving them by just 3D printing some of these things. Now the challenge with doing this at your own factory is that you don't always have people around who know how to use the process. How do you design a part for 3D printing? How do you make it manufacturable? This is generally when you would then turn to another supplier, a 3D printing manufacturer or service provider like us, where we can offer insight about how do you design and how do you manufacture with this process. In this case, Jeff and Joan were able to actually work together and learn how to use a printer and learn to get good at it. And Ford was good enough to let them be trained up and promoted into an additive manufacturing technician to where they could produce these parts and be an integral role at the plant fixing this stuff as they go along. And it's a huge credit to them because what's great about this also is the fact that they were not engineers, they were not deep in the 3D printing industry. They were folks who were trying to be good at their job and make the parts better and improve the performance of the factory at a whole, which is fantastic because you don't have to be an expert to use 3D printing within your facility or within your business. You just have to want to try it out and pursue it and run it down the rabbit hole and know what you need and just say, this is what I need, can it be made? And then ask someone who's an expert or go figure it out yourself. Heck, we got a whole YouTube channel about this stuff to see if it can be viable for you. Because if it is, it creates all kinds of new capabilities that can save your business or your factory millions of dollars per year. This was a fantastic story. We love covering these types of applications where folks have made very real significant economic impact by using 3D printing or mass production 3D printing. And this is what we live for and why we started the company and why we do what we do. So again, kudos to the guys over there at STP for doing this work. Um, it's awesome to see these examples and also to see them publicly because there's a lot of these stories around that just don't get the attention. So we always wanna shine a light on them whenever we can. If you yourself, are working at a factory that is using 3D printing and is making significant impacts on how that place operates, we would love to talk to you and get the nitty gritty of that story. So please reach out or comment down below. And if you just like this channel, go ahead and subscribe. Have a great day, everybody.